All right, what was another race I wanted to talk about? Um, Nomiki Konst jumped into this race in the New York State Senate District 59. And she did it by attacking DSA. And quite frankly, that was cringe as a mother. That was not the way to do it. Thankfully, Nomiki, after basically burning every bridge she has, dropped out of the race. So I give her credit for that. Well, chat, there's a little bit of a, there's a little bit of a difference. A little bit of a, of a difference between running as what I call an act of personal ambition versus running for office as part of a movement. I want to show you, I want to show you the difference. Let's take a look. I know we're saving Miss Beaches for a little later, but today we really prove that socialism wins. <laughs> Socialism wins, chat. And these politicians understand who is the place to go for your political content. Nina Turner, AOC, Kirsten Gonzalez, they're all where? With me! Socialism wins. I'm going to ignore the socialist that banned me last night after asking a question about capitalism versus socialism. The reason I'm not socialist, I've never got to answer due to a ban, is capitalism wins and has been winning for hundreds of years. That's like saying I'm a feudalist because feudalism is winning. Motherfucker, things change. That's fucking change. If you haven't voted for Gonzalez at New York, you haven't- Oh my god, hell yeah, Cynthia! Easiest W of our lives, chat. Easiest W of our lives. 8.40 right now. 8.40 right now. And Kristen is still hustling. We love that. Yo, get every last voter, baby. 8.40 right now. And Kristen is still hustling. We love that. <laughs> and here were the results, chat. Kirsten Gonzalez, 58% of the vote. And Crowley, 33% of the vote. She absolutely smashed the centrists. She smashed over a million dollars of dark money from the real estate industry. She ran against Crowley's like niece or something. Crowley machine, the Democratic machine in New York was bitch slapped by DSA. Bitch slapped. And that's why, chat, I told you, and I was honest about Nomiki, and I did it before she dropped out, because I know about politics. It's not a question to me. If it's between DSA-endorsed candidate, AOC-endorsed candidate, and someone else, I'm going with the movement every time. Interpersonal shit be damned, and I'll tell you why. Because I'm a real leftist. You know, there's a lot of people that put leftism on as a cloak that they can make a show on in the internet and hopefully make a couple month bucks talking about politics. But they ain't the left. Because when the going gets tough, they always go with their friends. Even if their friends are not a socialist, that's not who you want in a movement. You don't have to be friends with everybody in the movement. You don't. But you have to be a comrade. You have to show solidarity. And when the choice is between a socialist and someone who's not doing socialism, I don't care. I'm picking socialism every fucking time. That's the way I work. That's the way I roll. That's the way you should roll. That's how it goes. Comradeship is the most important thing. Now, doesn't mean we can't make friends and be friendly and have all that good vibes. But I'm going to tell you, I'm going to tell you it every single time. Every single time I'm going to go with the DS motherfucking A. Game, set, match in SD59, it appears. DSA has likely elected another state senator resoundingly. That's how you do it. 
Adams declares himself future of the Democratic Party ahead of final res re election results. Score one for AOC over Mayor Eric Adams. The political far left emerged victorious Tuesday night in four high-profile state Senate primaries despite efforts by Hisner and his allies to counter its growing power in Democratic-dominated Albany. Today, we really prove that socialism wins. Rep, Rep, Rep Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez endorsed Kirsten Gonzalez crowed after winning an open race to represent a district covering part of Queens, Brooklyn, and Manhattan. And not only that, not only that, she won in fucking Manhattan! She won in Manhattan! That's where she... <laughs> that is... So, get fucking excited. Get fucking excited because... Yeah, we're not going to win everything all the time. But sometimes we do win. And the squad, let me tell you something, chat. The squad is getting fat after this year. Progressive Democrats aren't having the greatest of results this midterm year, with many promising candidates losing okay. their primaries tomorrow. Motherfucking Medi, stop contradicting me. This is before last night. <laughs> God damn it, Medi. There were some disappointing defeats, too. I'll give you an example. Uh, fucking Meta, you dummy. Um, the the mis most disappointing stuff was the, was the, uh, 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 the race down in Texas with, um, what's his face? I can see his dumb face, but I can't remember his name for some reason. Disneros and Cuellar, thank you. Oh, God, my brain was having a brain fart. That was disappointing. Obviously... You know, Nina over the last year not winning in the special, Nina getting destroyed, not exciting, not great. And of course, uh, Neil getting turned out by the APAC. Not great. Those are the three big race defeats that we saw. But overall, it's been pretty goddamn exciting, to be honest with you. Despite that string of high-profile losses, there is a big bright spot for progressives in Texas. Keep going. Former Austin City Council member Greg Casal <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not. I'm incredibly lucky. 61% of the vote and will almost certainly become the next congressman in his very blue Austin district. With endorsements from the progressive trinity of Bernie, Warren, and AOC, Casar, a son of Mexican immigrants, is in many ways the stuff of lefty dreams. In fact, the Texas Tribune predicts that he'll be among the most progressive members of Congress ever to serve from Texas. And it's not hard to see why. Built this movement here in Austin, down to San Antonio, up and down I-35. Throughout the state, we built this together. We built it striking at fast food restaurants, fighting for 15. We built this fighting for survivors of sexual assault. We built it fighting for paid sick days. We built it standing yeah. up for our unhoused brothers and sisters. We yeah. built it marching in the streets in the movement for black lives. Kassar supports labor rights and a $15 minimum wage. He says that some police funding should go to social services instead. He wants to create a path to citizenship families. His background is particularly interesting That's because it. Democrats are scrambling to hold on to Latino voters in the wake of the 2020 election, especially in parts of Texas. Casar's primary win has clearly broken the mold in more ways than one. And as a highly progressive candidate from a once red but now increasingly purplish state, the left might do well to study his playbook. What lessons does his candidacy hold for future progressive campaigns? And what's he planning to do in Congress? The man himself, Greg Kassar, Democratic candidate for Texas's 35th congressional district, joins me now. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Let me start with a very simple kind of what do you believe question. Ideologically, Greg, where do you see yourself fitting into today's Democratic Party? What would you say to people who call you a Bernie protege or say you're the newest member of the squad? How left are you? Well, first, thanks so much for having me. And I believe uh, what I think the vast majority of people in this country and in my state believe that health care should be a human right and people shouldn't have to have GoFundMes to be able to pay for life-saving medication. I believe that we need union rights for all and to restore abortion rights. I think that's actually what most folks want and believe, but it's time to organize those folks into a majority that can deliver that kind of change. And I have really been inspired by folks like Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez and Senator Sanders and Warren uh, and and hope to be able to continue to build that movement here in the South, especially amongst young people and Latinos. 
So we saw a string of progressive losses, though, this primary season from Jessica Cisneros in your home state of Texas to Nina Turner in Ohio. Why do you think you were able to pull off a win where others failed? I think that we're seeing more people running, progressives running bold races all over the country than at least I've seen in my lifetime. And so while there were some difficult losses, uh, we've had over half a dozen really important wins uh, from Delia Ramirez in Illinois, another Latino majority district to Jasmine Crockett right up the road here in Dallas, uh, young women of color, Summer Lee also winning in Pennsylvania. And so I think that it's really important for us to recognize that we need to fight hard across all these districts that we're fighting uphill against big money and that it's really important for us to build out an infrastructure on the ground in communities so that we can sort of beat back a lot of the, the tropes and big money attacks that we know are coming against progressive candidates. I'm glad you mentioned Summer Lee and Jasmine Crockett, as those are names familiar to our viewers. They've both been on this show. Um, Greg, let me yes, ask you this. Summer How Lee, much exactly. do you attribute your win and your own rise to the rise of the labor movement in America right like, it's so interesting how people focus on the pain and not the pleasure, which is, of course, natural for a biological animal like we are. You know, danger is uh, much more risky than even the best thing happened to you is not as, as dangerous as, the, as a bad thing happening to you. So you're going to focus more of your attention on avoiding the pain than you are seeking pleasure, all things being equal. Uh, but like... Jessica Cisneros, yeah, she got narrowly beat. But you know who won? Summer Lee. So, like, if you decide to focus on Jessica Cisneros and ignore Summer Lee and feel bad about yourself, that's a decision that you're making. You are not making a rational decision. You're making an emotional decision, and you're seeking to punish yourself and feel bad. Summer Lee is a hell of a lot more exciting than Jessica, in my opinion, quite frankly. I like Jessica, and this is not to dog on Jessica. And a lot of people are going to interpret this as me dogging on Jessica, but I'm not. Summer Lee is better than Jessica Cisneros. Period. J Summer Lee winning in Pittsburgh is more important for our country than Jessica Cisneros winning that race. Summer Lee ran way to the left of Jessica. Now, Jessica is great, but she doesn't compare to Summer. Summer took on APAC head on. So, like... You know, if you decide to choose to be mad, to be depressed about Jessica Cisneros and say, oh, man, the left is losing. And look at some of the people that are losing. They don't, quite frankly, are not that good of, of candidates. Mondaire Jones, I'm glad he lost, quite frankly. I hate that guy. He's a fake. He's a fraudulent progressive. And he's a bitch. I'm glad he lost. Get him out. Get him out. I don't share a single tear. I'll talk about that race. I'm glad he's gone. Fuck him. He's bitch made. They literally teach in therapy how to rewire your brain to focus more on the positive because for most of us, the lizard brain focus on the negative because it might be dangerous thing is unnecessary in the modern world. I mean, you should pay attention to the negatives and be honest about it, but you shouldn't excessively fixate on it. Right now, we're seeing wins for union organizers against Starbucks and Amazon. This is a pretty historic moment, isn't it? Politically and economically. Do we already cover it the Trump stuff? Is. Yeah, we did. And while sometimes people think of Texas as a corporate state, we're actually home to a historic labor movement and civil rights movement. My district stretches from Austin down to San Antonio, where Emma Tenayuca in her early 20s led a historic strike of thousands of women pushing for higher wages at a pecan shelling factory that actually helped push then Franklin Del President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. I was under the impression that Jones was good, but what don't I know? I mean, he's fine. He's better than most, but he proved himself to be bitch made. And, and there's a lot of sus things about him. And quite frankly, again, he's somebody that I papered over for, uh, for the benefit of just advancing the left generally. But he sucks. Like, honestly, he, he deserved to lose, quite frankly. So place one of our country, some of those same labor organizers that pushed me to run for city council and then said, hey, why don't you go be our union salt in James, Congress? James, you're white. You're not uh, allowed to so point that out. We're able to translate that movement, pushing against bad employers into one that could also deliver electoral wins. What would you say to a lot of Democratic Party consultants watching this interview saying, ah, oh, the guy's good, but, you know, Austin is not Texas. Austin is Austin. I, I hear that all the time, but the fact of the matter is um, Texas is a, a diverse state where many people live in our cities. It's communities of color. It is people who more often than not 
don't vote at all. If we're just talking to the folks that normally vote, then it's too often we're losing. But there are so many voters in our state who aren't inspired by the existing political system, who have seen the system fail them so often that why would they participate? And so in my view, we aren't a red state or a blue state, we're an under-organized state. And if we organize those communities, then we can actually transform it into a state where people can be proud of their government and see it work for them. So you mentioned it's a very diverse state, which it undoubtedly is. Um, a lot of Latino voters, a lot of Latino candidates, including yourself. There's been a lot of hand-wringing on the Democratic Party side about losing Latino voters, uh, especially uh, in parts of Texas, especially along the border. What do you say to people who say it, the part of the problem here is that the Latino community is not a monolith. It's not, you know, the Democratic Party can't claim it. The Republican Party can't claim it. Different Latino voters in different places are going to vote in different ways. <laughs> Of course, the Latino community isn't a monolith, but the fact of the matter is the overwhelming number of Latinos are working class people in this state and across the country. And when I represented a heavily Latino district in the most immigrant and diverse district in Central Texas as a city council member, and now in this majority Latino district for Congress, overwhelmingly what voters, especially Latino voters talked about again, wasn't whether we should be a red state or a blue state. They don't want us to be a corporate state. They want to see us fighting for higher wages. They want to see so, us fighting so that people can pay their so rent. You don't buy, so you don't buy the argument from someone in, on the quote-unquote centrist end of your party who look at polls and say, no, no. What the fuck's that's... going on with the audio? What the fuck's going on with the audio? It's totally broken. Okay, I'm refreshing. What voters... Is quote centrist end of your party you look at polls and say no no <laughs> okay Latino so voters are not happy they about it defund up. the police <laughs> Latino Sorry, voters are not happy uh, about some of our stances even on immigration um you don't buy that james i already of told course, you you're white we shut can't up deliver material changes in people's I lives help, you them with the rent, help raise their wages then it creates to be a, a little bit smarter you're gonna get which fired so easily the right wing and gop operatives can fill that vacuum with their message that's an inside but what thought, we were yeah. able to do as i ran for city council Ms. Was Poopy Pants, thanks for the cheer for ones. You're lucky there's somebody like me to give you advice. From $7.25 to $15 an hour, and this year the minimum will be $20 an hour. We could show wow. that result. We blocked evictions during the pandemic when the federal government was struggling Austin to do so. Austin minimum wage is when $20 an hour? Oh, shit. The lowest eviction Pace. rates in the country was here in Texas, and Minneapolis was the only other city that You've... could tie us. So that sort of thing, I think, blocks out. Uh, those sorts of messages where people are just trying to ignite culture wars or pit people against one another. Houston and Austin and San Antonio are really blue. Dallas is about 60-40. Yeah. The only reason you would go to Texas is to visit places like Austin. Most of Texas is an absolute ruin. It's a desert. Like, there's nothing there. You want to inhale dust? If you're going to Texas, you're going there for the cities. Let's be real. You can buy two or more if you want to, AR-15s, hundreds of rounds of ammunition, and take that weapon that was originally designed for use on the battlefields in Vietnam to penetrate an enemy soldier's helmet at 500 feet and knock him down dead. Up against kids at five feet. It may be funny to you, but it's not funny to me, okay? It was a very uh, powerful moment, very authentic moment. Uh, do you wish more Democrats, more people in your party would take a more aggressive approach against your right-wing critics? I totally appreciate that Beto O'Rourke has been so authentic and has put I'm really his life into going it's and talking annoying. to voters all across the state in a way that they know he's saying what he means. When Beto O'Rourke went and confronted Governor Abbott and Dan Patrick when they were having their big press conference in Uvalde. Yes. He really represented how so many of us felt standing up to the power structure. When he is talking about protecting our kids, it, it's not his language that is getting headlines as much, or at least talk, f making voters feel what they're feeling. It's his authenticity. And I think that we need to- Ugh. Ugh. Maddie, why'd you make him come on here to, he has to compliment Beto. He can't insult Beto. Why, he has to. Like, you can't go on there and be like, I won, but Beto O'Rourke sucks. You can't do that. So you have to force him to be like, he's so authentic. Ugh. Yes. Own who we are, and that will make voters... We don't have a messaging problem. I mean, we have plenty of pollsters in the Democratic Party. It's people believing that message and knowing that we're going to fight for them and put them first. Great point. Thanks, Greg. I love that. That's a great, that's a great point.
Are you watching the stream unsubbed? You're making income inequality worse. You are doing anti-praxis. We are the only Twitch stream that will not accept scam advertisers, and I will never fuck you over by selling you crap.